I want to take a look at how interest rates are stated because there's some confusion over this or I've had confusion in the past. The APR stands for annual percentage rate and it's the legal rate that has to be quoted. It's the stated rate. So if you look at your credit card statement, it may say the APR is 18% or it might say the APR is 1.5% per month. But is that really the rate that you're paying? And the answer is no. What you're paying is you're paying an effective rate that accounts for compounding. So this is, it can be good or it can be bad. If you are saving money, more compounding means more money in your account. But if you're looking at a credit card statement, a higher or a greater number of compounding periods is going to increase the EAR or the effective annual rate. So let's, let's look at how compounding affects future value and then we'll go and we'll take a look at how you actually calculate um, EAR. So for example, suppose that you have uh, a present value equal to $100. And suppose the interest rate is 12%. If we compound it annually, what are we going to get? Annual compounding means you get interest once, so the future value is going to be 100 times 1.12 and so if you work that out, that's going to be $112. Now, if you compound it semi-annually, and semi-annual means twice a year, your rate is going to be equal to 12% the annual rate divided by 2, so you're going to get 6% every 6 months. And the number of periods that you're going to have is going to be 2, and is going to be equal to 2. So if we're talking about saving money for a 2-year period, and so our future value is going to look like this. 100 times 1.06 squared. And we can work that out. One 0.06, raise it to the second power, and then multiply by 100, and we get $112.36. How come we get 36 cents more? Well, we get 36 cents more because in the first six-month period, your account grows to 106, and then you get a 6% return on that 106. So 6% 6 of the extra $6, the, the $6 in interest you already received, is 36 cents. Now let's do it for a, a couple more periods and then I'll show you the actual calculation. Let's do a monthly one. So if we did it monthly, we would have what? We would have the rate is equal to 12% divided by 12 months, or 1% per month. And the number of periods we would have in a year would be equal to 12. So in this case, the future value would be equal to 100 times 1.01 .01 raised to the 12th power. So let's see what that is. 1.12 raise it to the twelfth power. Oops, made a mistake here. 1.01 .01 raised to the twelfth power times 100 and we get hundred and twelve dollars and sixty-eight cents. So you can see that the more compounding periods we have, the higher our account balance is going to be. So essentially the higher the effective rate is going to be. So what's the formula? And you may be able to sort of figure it out just by looking at these numbers here. The formula looks like this. The EAR is going to be equal to 
1 plus the APR, that rate that you see quoted, divided by, and I'll call it M, M is the number of compounding periods, raised to the mth power, and then, I'm sorry, actually it should be 1 plus this. So if you have 1 plus the EAR equals 1 plus the APR raised to the mth power. And so if you wanted to calculate the the actual EAR, you should, should subtract 1 from both sides. Okay, the reason I had to add 1 to this is because I added 1 to this. So it would be equal to this number in the parentheses, APR, divided by M raised to the mth power minus 1. So let's see if we can work it out. Suppose we have, well, if we have 12% and we compound annually, you'll see it won't it won't look any different. It'll be exactly the same. The EAR would be 1 plus 0.12 divided by 1 raised to the first power and then minus 1, so that's going to be 1.12 minus 1 which is going to equal 0.12 or 12 percent, so that works. Now suppose we compound semi-annually we'll have the following. We will have the EAR equals 1 plus 0.12 divided by 2 raised to the second power minus 1. And let's see what we get. Actually, you can sort of figure it out by looking at the previous future value problems. 1.06 y to the x raised to the second power minus 1.1236 or 12.36 percent. And let's do one more. Let's do the um, let's do the monthly rate. The EAR is going to be equal to. 1 plus 0.12 divided by 12 raised to the 12th power minus 1. So 0.12 divided by 12 is 0.01, so we have 1.01 raised to the 12th power. And we subtract out 1, and we get 0.1268 six eight or twelve point six eight percent let's just uh, let's take a look at a, a credit card statement suppose you have a credit card and the rate on the card is eighteen percent let's find the effective annual rate Okay, this would be the APR. This is what they have to quote by law. The EAR would be 1 plus 0.18 divided by 12 raised to the 12th power. Okay, credit card statements are usually monthly, so this would be compounded monthly. So let's see what we have here. 0.18 divided by 12 gives us one and a half percent plus one and we'll raise it to the twelfth power just following the formula and subtract one and so we get 0.1956 or 19.56 percent so you can see that as bad as an APR of 18% looks, your effective rate is really 19, over 19.5%. 19 so it's a real argument for paying off your credit card on time.